Well, the fog of war, or you might call it the fog of PR. The Obama administration, since announcing bin Laden's death, has flip flopped on the details quite a number of times. First, it was a firefight, and an armed bin Laden fought back. Listen to this. He was engaged in a firefight with those that entered the area of the house that he was in. And whether or not he got off any rounds, uh, I quite frankly don't know. Well, a day later, the White House knew, and it was quite a different story. They announced bin Laden wasn't armed at all. They gave a different account. Listen to this. A woman, rather, bin Laden's wife, rushed the U.S. assaulter and was shot in the leg but not killed. Bin Laden was then shot and killed. He was not armed. Now, more confusion. A senior Pakistani security official says bin Laden's 12 year old daughter claims he was captured alive in his Pakistani hideout and then shot by U.S. Special Forces. Now, if this proves true, it gives credence to questions critics are raising of whether this killing was outside the law. Listen to Judge Napolitano. What he the had legal to say. phrase for the 40 minute event on Sunday afternoon that resulted in the death of bin Laden is called an extrajudicial killing. This means that a government killed someone who was not a soldier on a battlefield, who did not pose an immediate threat to the freedom or security of any people that that government protects, and the killing was not a punishment ordered by a judge after a trial. Every Western country except Israel and the United States has condemned extrajudicial killings, as all Western countries, including Israel and the U.S., have laws that make this criminal. Now. Earlier, RT's own Adam Kokesh sat down for a one on one interview with Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul and asked him about the confusion over the story, about earlier comments that Ron Paul made that this confusion uh, actually invites conspiracy theories that the government brings on themselves. Here's what he said Maybe, maybe it's the dissent that they want, and then they can pop up an answer and say, hey, look. You know, we tricked you into believing this and you had to believe something else. But I, I think may, maybe it's more because governments like secrecy. Uh, they're not, you know, whether it's the Federal Reserve or our foreign policy, just think how many times uh, we've gone to war by uh, distortion of the evidence, you know, and lie our way into war, whether it was World War, uh, whether it was Vietnam War or, or uh, you know, going into Iraq. I mean, they, they have to, you know, deceive us. Um, and then when the people distrust the government, then any question government is called a conspiracy theory, you know, and they, they do that to say that, oh, you're nuts because you're, every, every, yeah, every, everything is a conspiracy. But um, I think the best thing is you should only believe the conspiracies that are true. Now, you can watch Adam's full interview with Congressman and presidential candidate Ron Paul tonight on his show, Adam versus the Man. That's at 7 p.m. But first... Joining me now to talk about all the mixed White House messages is Jason Burmis. He's a documentary filmmaker joining us now from New York to try to make sense of it all. Thanks so much for being with us. Now, what do you think is going on with the White House and the administration's inconsistencies? Is this a product of government spin or is this some kind of massive, uncoordinated confusion? Well, number one, I don't think we know at all what happened here. We don't know if we actually got bin Laden. We don't know if bin Laden's been dead for years. We know he's been reported dead several times. We know that he was on kidney dialysis almost a decade ago. We know people like Dalton Fury within the military said they had him in Afghanistan, were not allowed to get him. We know the book Jawbreaker contends in 2003 the same exact thing happened. So why now? This is a publicity stunt for the Obama administration to show that Super Obama has now gotten the boogeyman. But unfortunately, the wars of aggression will continue. Just a few weeks ago, the uh, White House announced we would not have this drawdown we were promised in November of 11. So we're not getting out of Iraq. We're not getting out of, out of Afghanistan. But Obama and his administration get to pose as heroes for the 10th anniversary of 9-11. And who knows what other evidence they'll put out there. They say they're not going to put out photographs. They may put out photographs later. Right now, all we have is a somewhat shoddy video of a bloody mansion that seems to be taken over by Navy SEALs in the government's original account. But remember, in the original account, Obama was something out of a Scarface movie where he was hurling his wife in front of them, he was resisting by shooting at them, and now we find out that he was absolutely unarmed and possibly shot in the head after being captured. Okay, so you don't buy at all that bin Laden is dead? You don't buy the DNA evidence that the administration says that they have? 
how can we buy the DNA evidence that the administration has? We know that bin Laden during the late 70s and early 80s was an open CIA assets while we were posing against the Soviets and working with the Mujahideen. Well, times changed. I mean, he was fighting for someone else then uh, back in 2001, and it wasn't the Mujahideen in Afghanistan against the Soviets. So it's a different time, you could argue. Uh, what would convince you? Would the photos convince you? Is that kind of what would debunk the conspiracy theory that Ron Paul says the White House invites with this confusion? Well, the White House says that they have a live video feed, so why can't the American public see at least portions of that? We haven't seen a video from this man in years, and the videos that were put out are contended by many experts to be outright fakes. So again, what can we believe from this criminal administration that did nothing to prosecute the war crimes of the previous administration that has done nothing to get mm -hmm. us out of these wars of aggression and now only continued in the Middle East and South Africa with this Libya situation. So no, I won't be buying the photographs. In fact, the press ran with an openly photoshopped uh, photograph. It was so bad. I'm a graphic designer myself. I do a lot of my own graphics. If I were to see it would take a lot from photographic evidence, especially when they say he took massive wounds to mm -hmm. the head to prove that this has been lied. So would anything convince you? Would a, con would a video, as you said, convince you? Well, a video of a dead body would prove that he's dead. That doesn't say that he, you know, is the sole person responsible for 9-11. Let's, let's not forget. We okay, let's, let's not get off topic here. Let's stay on topic. Let me ask you this. Speaking of videos, uh, there was a video that was once used to uh, paint a heroic story behind the rescue of Jessica Lynch during the Iraq war. It comes to mind here because back then the Pentagon said she was taken prisoner, held by vicious Iraqi guards, abused, and then ultimately rescued valiantly by the U.S. But in reality, later, the story comes out, the Iraqi guards had fled. There was no resistance. There was no valiant rescue. Do you see similar similarities here? Is this a Je Jessica Lynch-style fable in your eyes? Absolutely is the Jessica Lynch uh, fable in my eyes. The same exact thing's happening. What did I see the day after that story came out? It was the front page of the New York Post, the Washington Post, the Washington Times. Everybody was running with this all-American, blonde, pretty girl who had saved her unit heroically and now was being abused by these evil, evil terrorists. And uh, it, was, it was absolutely ridiculous. They even brought in Jerry Bruckheimer to stage her rescue in a hospital that had contacted them days earlier and said they had been treating her and just wanted to get her up. No, this was absolutely another one of those type of operations. And I think we're going to see that come to light in the next weeks and months. And I think the story is going to change and change again, just like the Jessica Lynch situation. And I would assume that uh, following that logic, you would also believe that the death of Pat Tillman, which was uh, first said that he was killed in a patriotic fight uh, against the enemy, but then it turns out he was killed by friendly fire. It was covered up by the military. I would assume you agree that that's a similar, uh, this is a similar situation. Would, would that be fair? I would say so. The... Uh family of Pat Tillman had to fight for months and years just to get that story out and the truth. And again, that was just a conspiracy theory. He was, he was shot by the evil Taliban and Al-Qaeda, not his own men, and it did end up being fracturicide. And a lot of people don't understand that story or its significance, but it shows the lying culture within our military industrial complex. And one thing I want to ask about that, because in both of those cases, it did come out that the truth had been covered up or that uh, the truth was not revealed at first. It, it, it eventually came out and lies were told. But it didn't really seem that anybody paid for those lies. If the story of Osama bin Laden continues to move further away from that dramatic tale that President Obama told Sunday night in his speech, this is an international case. This was a, an international uh, terrorist, number one, in the eyes of the U.S. Will the U.S. pay and suffer any consequences if, if more inconsistencies come out in this case? I doubt it. They haven't paid for anything else. And remember, this isn't just the United States of America. We have full backing from most of the European nations, military support from other nations around the world. This is bigger than just the United States government and their actions. This is about globalization and the globalists moving to take over the area of Eurasia and put it under their full control. Okay, let me ask you about this, because we heard Judge Napolitano earlier calling this an extrajudicial killing. Uh, already we've heard news that Osama bin Laden's daughter is saying her dad was essentially executed. 
this kind of gives credence to Napolitano's argument that this was an extrajudicial killing. Do you think that the White House's fumbling of the message kind of makes claims like hers more plausible, more believable, and ultimately undermine the U.S. account of things? Well, I think you're just going to get so many accounts right now, it's going to be hard to get out of that whole fog of war. But what I, I can say about that is that why haven't we had any trials? Why can't we bring the man in alive and put him in front of, uh, you know, a world court? We did that with the Nazis, and that's who everybody's comparing Osama to. He was the next Hitler. We had to get him. We had to kill him. He didn't deserve a trial. But we gave all those other Nazis trials. And we put that in the public record. We're not even going to do that with Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and his cronies after they've been waterboarded hundreds of times, and that's how they got the confessions out of them. No, they're going to be military tribunals also. So why doesn't the public get to see the transparency of what these evil men have done? It doesn't even seem that the public really gets to uh, have a, a, a big say in anything other than kind of the official narrative. I want to take a look at the backlash to some people that have come out with comments that don't uh, follow kind of just the straight and narrow patriotic course in this case. And one is that of a, a NFL player, Richard Mendenhall. I, I do believe we have that. He tweeted shortly after uh, when, of course, we saw people celebrating bin Laden's death in New York near the World Trade Center and, and at the White House. He tweeted, what kind of person celebrates death? It's amazing how people can hate a man they have never even heard speak. We've only heard one side. Of course, talking about bin Laden in that case, and very quickly he had to come out and apologize. He wrote a blog about it. The Steelers, his team responded. I mean, there was a big PR move to kind of have this guy change course. Why is it that anybody that kind of uh, veers from the accepted narrative is chastised? The country is supposed to value free speech. Yeah, unfortunately, that's not the case when you sent against the government and I was just utterly disgusted at about 11 30 12 o'clock that night when I was watching the live news and it was something like an extension of spring break outside the White House you had all these 19 20 21 year old kids running up to the camera going number one and chanting USA USA they don't know what happened on 9 11 they don't know who Osama bin Laden was or is or anything to do with the actual event the geopolitical relevance of what happened, the possibility that it was a false flag attack. And that's because we have a dumbed down iPhone, iPad, instant gratification culture that is obsessed with dancing with the stars and American Idol. They've got to wake up. They've got to get involved with what the government's doing. They have to challenge official narratives. They have to look at what's going on with this country, not only with the wars in the Middle East, but the current economic situation. All of a sudden, the dollar's going to stabilize because we got the boogeyman. Well, that'll last a week or possibly a month. But then the same old unemployment and the same old housing crisis is going to continue to eviscerate this country. And are we going to still be chanting USA, USA, USA? Yeah, we will. Because we are fooled by the media constantly. We want a superhero. We wanted Obama to be on the cover of the amazing Spider-Man and the Rolling Stone in the clouds like some godlike figure, unfortunately. All and right, I Jason. <laughs> Jason, I want to thank you. That, thank you for not watching American Idol and for filling us in on what you think is behind this confusion coming out of the White House. That was documentary filmmaker Jason Burmis.